folks, it's Barry here. I'm working on our community weathering project here. So I decided to shoot the video and uh, give you a little explanation on what's going on here. What I have here is a little Tyco Swift reefer I picked up at an NMRA event for like three dollars. I figured it'd be very appropriate to uh, do our little weathering test with. So I've decided I'm going to be using Bragdon weathering powders to uh, do my weathering with. So let's see how everything goes. Uh, first thing I want to do is, you know, apply a good coat of a, a base color. So I will start with the uh, Dust Bowl Brown in a minute here. Uh, what I'm using is a fairly stiff flat brush because Bragdon powders have a, a good adhesive to them. So let's see how it looks here. So as you stroke the colors on with the Bragdon powders, the harder you press, the better they adhere. So you really want to work the colors in if you want, you know, bolder colors. Uh, some adhere better than others, like the Dust Bowl Brown is a light base coat. It's enough to tone down the bright plastic sheen, as you can see on the car. So in the end, when I'm done with this, it'll be a perfect base coat to... Uh, flatten out that sheen. So I'm just going to work the colors in here for a few minutes and uh, see how it all comes out. You'll notice as I get further along you know some bigger areas like like where the swift sign is uh, that'll really tone down that bright red too when I get to it so. And don't be afraid to apply too much because until you really work them in like I'm doing here um, they won't stick as as good as you might think so you want to work them in a little bit to get them to adhere and then number one thing remember with most weathering powders and very specifically with the Bragdon powders do not use dull coat some you can use uh, like Krylon matte finish or whatever but Bragdon powders very specifically state to use Krylon's workable fixative to seal the powders because workable fixative is actually designed for chalks, pastels, and graphite pencil drawings. So it won't attack the material. And make sure when you use it to spray it on from a good distance so the you know the spray itself won't blow your powders off the surface see there you go um, that's what the other side looks like so we'll be doing that shortly now I'm going to work on the ends here to you know get just again just get a base coat of color of the dust bowl brown Oh no, it didn't take me too long. It took me maybe a half hour to do the car. It wasn't that bad. So uh, it was quite peaceful and enjoyable. I just did it while I was sitting in the hotel room up in Amherst. Let's... There's one thing with the weathering powder, so they do get everywhere, as you can see from the light. There's a little bit of a cloud, <laughs> and they, that's why I put down the newspaper, because they get everywhere. So what I'm doing there is just a quick spread out of the colors, and then I'll work my way down the car. You know, sometimes I brush up, sometimes I brush down, because in this case, I'm just getting a, like I said, a base coat of color. Make sure I hit the trucks too. And as you're going along, if there's excess powder left behind, you can just brush it, you know, off or brush it over to the next area to keep working. So, I mean, you don't lose as much as you might think, but um, um, sometimes if you're careful, if you do one color at a time, you can actually collect it and uh, put it back in the container so you really don't if you do it right you don't lose any powder 
it's only when you start applying multiple colors and the all end what falls off the car or excess powder ends up on your surface then you can't put it back on the in the container because they're all mixed together as you can see already the the, the signs muted no longer has that bright silver shine to it so Those collars have lasted me a fairly amount of time, I mean, a fairly long amount of time. I actually use them when I weathered my uh, tunnel liners, and I use them to weather all the buildings on our Strasburg Railroad Club layout, at least in the station area and such. I have more buildings to do, but I did all three station modules, all the buildings there, and parking lot and roads and stuff, and it came out pretty good. Now we got one more end to do. And there you go, Dust Bowl Brown. It's always a, a good general base color. Next, we're going to put on some soot. You know, to darken up some of the areas like the ends of the cars and such. And if you think you've got too much, you can, you know, dust the brush off on your surface there and then pick it back up from that pile. But the darker car like this is good to, um, you know, do some shading effects on the end of the car. Uh, you could use a dark brown too to simulate the uh, dirt kick up from the wheels and such. But you see there, I'm putting on some effects like it would be from, say, soot from a steam engine or diesel exhaust. So, and you want to streak some across the roof of the car as well. You just really build it up in layers, you know, starting with your base colors like this, and then, then we get into doing some of the uh, rusts and such. And some of the colors, like the rusts, tend to leave a shade behind more so than like the black or brown do. So you got to go easy on them, or else you'll be trying to, you'll have to go back with Dust Bowl Brown to tone them down which is what I've done in the past when I've weathered something. But it, it can be taken, I mean, you can literally take a, you know, a, a, a stiff brush that's clean and wet it and try and wash the powders off. But these ones are harder than others because the braggots have a micro adhesive in the powder itself. So they tend to uh, stick better than other powders without being sealed anyway. Overall, I was very happy with how the project turned out. So, now I want to take some of the, the, the soot and highlight details on the side of the car. And also to get a nice dirt wash down the bottom of the car, too. So, I'm scrubbing it in there, little circular motions. That's why it pays with these to use a stiffer brush because it can actually, it, the, the harder you push on it, it activates the adhesive. It makes it stick better.
you know, different kinds of cars sometimes require different weathering techniques. Box cars are a fairly simple one to start with for your first project. And just like this one, go to a train show, pick up a you know five dollar car or whatever. Get, don't care if it's even a cheap Tyco car. This has horn hole couplers, cheap plastic wheels and trucks. I really don't care because it's just for me to play with the weathering. And now we're going to go for some medium rust. I tend not to use the light rust too much because it's very orange. And we'll do some rusting along the roof line there, along the roof ribs. So in this case, instead of going along the length of the car, I'm dusting the ribs crosswise, you know, laterally on the car. And just a little bit here and there. Making sure you get a good coat around the hatches and stuff as such as that. As you can see, I got a lot of rust powder laying on the paper there. Um, that I, I can eventually pick up and save if I move it off to the side. The medium and dark rusts from Brad can make a really good rust patterns because they tend to leave like a reddish sheen around the area that you're brushing in, especially the harder you brush. So it really does give you that good rust effect. I believe you can take 70% isopropyl alcohol and even make a wash out of them, though I've never tried to do that. Like I said, take a car like this and just play with it. You know, get used to trying different techniques. You know, go buy a couple of them. Try some washes, some powders, some acrylics, you know, whatever you want to try. That way, if you don't like what it likes, you're not, not really any money on the car, you know. You wouldn't go for your first project and go buy like a $40 Acurail car or something like that. But a $5 Tyco Cheapy, eh. Who cares? So let me clean up the workspace here to get some of the powder. See, this is where I went wrong here. I should have gathered the rust and I could have put it back in the container, but now it's all contaminated with the other color. So that powder is not, I mean, I could use it, but so, see, there you go. This rust accumulation all on the ribs of the roof, around the crevices and the hatches and such. So I'm picking up some of the rust off the paper there that's still, you know, laying there and just work my way down in vertical streaks down the side of the car. I hope you all like what you're seeing so far. It was a, definitely a fun little project for me. So I'm switching to a little bit bigger brush here. Actually, no, I'm sorry, that's the smaller brush. Do a little more detail lines. That one's actually slightly stiffer, too. It's a little short filbert brush. See, so, yeah, I'm scrubbing in some vertical runs.
I'm gonna hit the truck frames too while I'm at it. There you go. You see a rust on the ladder, some rust streaks running down the side of the car now. I usually tend to start here with the medium first, get a good base coat, and then I I highlight areas with the darker rust that makes it look like older rust. The dark rust is a very ruddy red brown, and uh, that tends to leave more of a shadow behind than the the medium and light rust does. So go sparingly with that at first. When we get to that, you'll see what I'm talking about. So there we go. Here's the dark rusting. See how much browner it looks. Got a very, like I said, a dark, ruddy red cast to it. Just did a little bit of extra rust details on the roof. Now, if you put too much of, say, the rust on and you want to tone it down a little bit, uh, you can actually take the Dust Bowl Brown and gently apply a light coat over top of the rust area, and that tones the color down. Now see here I'm just doing random streaks of the dark rust. Trying to keep it under control. I'm more deliberate with applying that color. I don't know if you can notice here, but like that the side so the car is a much more distinct rusty color to it now in that area under the swift sign. Yeah, notice it next to the ladder there, how much darker red it looks. That makes it look much more like an aged rust.
I really should have cleaned up each color after I got done with it. I would have saved myself a little powder. But no biggie. I really like using these powders. I'm going to, you know, probably pick up a few more cars and try a few other techniques. But since I had these and I've used them before, I decided to start with these first. So we'll see where I'll shoot a video, see where I go next with another car. I would like to try and doing some washes and stuff like that and see how well they work compared to these powders. Yeah, I gotta go get Quark. I will fix it if to see how it seals up and holds some powders. If it sometimes the reason they say not to use the uh, dull coat because it tends to dissolve the powders or blow them off the surface. It won't blow the Bragdon's off as much because of the microadhesive, but it does attack the actual material, the pigment. So that's why you have to be careful and make sure you use the right sealant, which to be safe. Always use a, the workable fixative, no matter whose brand powder or weathering material you use. That way, you can be assured, if, especially if it's chalk or powder based, that it won't affect it. So, I have quite a little pile of the dark rust on the newspaper there that I'm working from. Every now and then, I add some extra onto the brush. So with a very stiff brush, you can make you know some fairly fine vertical lines. Sometimes you take the powder that's laying on the like the newspaper there. You could, you know, mix some of it together to make a dark shade or something like that. And uh apply that as well. So as long as you like I said, if you clean up as you're going, you can save them. But if not in the end, you still might be able to use them. Like I was able to use them a lot when I weathered my tunnels, being as this car is so small, uh since I didn't keep them separate, it kind of I kind of end up having to toss them. Maybe next time we'll just mix them together and throw them in a little container and see how it looks. Now I'm just about done here, so I hope everybody likes the way it looks. Just give it one last look over to make sure I got everything. Get some of dust ball brown. And do the undercarriage. Make sure you get plenty of it in there and dirty that up. Well, there you go, folks. One weathered Swift refrigerator line reefer car. Uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed uh, the video here. I'll give you a quick look at it.
I have some still photos I took as well that I'll uh, incorporate into the video here. But you can see how the dark rust and such everything all blends in real nice and adds a different different highlights here and there, darker, lighter colors. Overall, I'm very happy with the way it turned out, so. Not bad for my first attempt, I would say. You can see the rust highlights on the truck frames and everything. And there's all the dirt splashed up on the bottom of the car. Hope everyone's enjoyed the video. And there will be more to follow.